Hello and welcome to the Angamfter Nurse. Tonight we're in Tobacco Dock in East London. It's a warm summer's night, it's Thursday evening, and we're going for a walk. And as per usual, I've made my way from the City of London, so I've been looking at glass and chrome all day, so the brickwork is much appreciated. And we've got a fleeting view for a few moments of St George in the East, another one of Hawksmoor's masterpieces. We did a video back here in March and I will put it in the details. And as we enjoy this walk uh, and looking at the fine brickwork, let's talk a little bit about the history. Tobacco Dock was part of the London docks designed by Scottish civil engineer and architect John Rennie. And to the viewer's relief, that will be my last mention of brickwork tonight. The warehouse was completed in 1812 and primarily served as a store for imported tobacco and therefore the name. The docks had closed by 1969, containerization and the growth of ports like Felixstowe and Tilbury with their ability to handle much larger ships that carried the containers facilitated this decline. After the London Dock Company closed in 1969, the warehouse and surrounding areas here fell into dereliction until it was turned into a shopping centre which opened in 1989. But if your memory goes back to the late 80s and early 90s, it was a poor time to make investments. Interest rates were at record levels, around 15% for a certain amount of time and within two years the shopping centre had closed. And for two decades tobacco dock stood largely empty. It was used as a barracks for the military personnel, providing security during the 2012 London Olympics. But thankfully the dock has been reinvented and regenerated as an events uh, location. So it has an exciting and diverse calendar of events ranging from food festivals, live music festivals, conferences, awards and gaming conferences. I dropped in a few slides just to give you a feel for how the interior of the dock looks and it also has a, a very upmarket fashionable rooftop bar as many areas in East London tend to have nowadays. The shopping centre had been the idea of Brian Jackson and Laurie Cohen who conceived a shopping centre with specialist outlets as well as high street names and other tourist attractions to rival Covent Garden. The architect of this shopping centre was Sir Terry Farrell and the whole scheme cost almost 50 million. The idea and the uh, scope behind the shopping centre was very, very ambitious to say the least, but maybe it was just too early in the regeneration of Docklands and the East End of London. Two replica ships are moored on the ornamental canal and that's the canal we're going to walk down. Three Sisters is a copy of a 330 tonne ship built at Blackwall Yard in 1788 and which traded until 1854, taking manufactured goods to the East and West Indies and returning with tobacco and spices. The Sea Lark is a copy of an 18th century American built schooner which ran the blockade and was captured by the Admiralty during the Anglo-American War between 1812 and 1814. Also, I've dropped in a shot from Google Maps just to show you where we are in relation to East London, the Thames and the City of London. I dropped in a print of Tobacco Dock as it looked in the mid 19th century and you can see it's close proximity to the Thames Shadwell Basin and we'll explore the link between the Dock and the Thames later on in the vlog. Before us we can see the ornamental canal, now that's what we'll be walking along today up to the Hermitage which was one of the access points from the Thames 
into Tobacco Dock. Another access point initially was Wapping Old Stairs and Shadwell Basin was developed in about the 1830s to add another access point. The Mental Canal ran through the docks bringing in 350 tonne vessels laden with Australian wool and American tobacco ready to be deposited in the expensive tobacco warehouses that occupied the site. Once again my camera work is slightly wonky but I promise you it does improve but only just slightly. But while we walk along the uh, ornamental canal I will um, regale you with stories of tobacco and the dock itself. The warehouse was purpose built to handle tobacco which was introduced into England in the early 1600s. Tobacco came from the new colony of Virginia and very quickly became popular. Not only was it smoked in large quantities, but it was also chewed and sniffed. And of course, as all governments do, they saw opportunities with potential revenue and they taxed it quite heavily. If you went back 200 years in our mythical time machine, you'd probably be overwhelmed by the smell of tobacco and also wine which has started to be imported in large quantities and was stored also at Tobacco Dock. The construction of the dock cost something like four million. The massive wall, and we won't mention another word, enclosed something like 70 acres of buildings, quays and jetties and cost 65,000 pounds itself. Now, in this area, defense was a key factor because piracy was rampant. In 1800, professional bandits such as the River Pirates, the Light Horsemen, the Heavy Horsemen and the Mudlarks, each with their own techniques and working with the corrupt crews under their control, stole something like nearly a million pounds worth of goods from the open river. Not only did the dogs have to contend with humans behaving badly, but with all the ships that were moored here, there really was a problem with rats and the dock itself employed something like 300 cats and dogs to really control that population. And in this area we would have been very near a place called the Queen's Pipe. Now you won't see it today but it was the popular name for the furnace that burnt defective tobacco and other goods on which duty was not paid. And I will quote from John Tim's Curiosities of London, 1867, which records Near the northeast corner of the Queen's Warehouse, a guidepost inscribed to the kiln directs you to the Queen's pipe or chimney of the furnace. On the door of the latter and of the room are painted the Crown Royal and VR. In this kiln are built all such goods as do not fetch the amount of their duties and the customs charges. Tea, having once set the chimney of the kiln on fire, is rarely burnt, and the wine and spirits are emptied into the docks. And to continue, the huge mass of fire in the furnace is fed night and day with condemned goods. On one occasion, 900 Austrian multi hams were burnt. On another, 45,000 pairs of French gloves, and silks and satins, tobacco and cigars are here consumed in vast quantities. The ash is being sold by the ton as manure for killing insects and to soak boilers and chemical manufacturers. Nails and other pieces of iron sifted from the ashes are prized for their toughness in making gun barrels. Gold and silver, remains of plate, watches and jewellery thrown into the furnace are also found in the ashes. Another industry associated with tobacco dock and not unsurprisingly was cigar making. Many of the cigar makers were Dutch and their normal working day was from 8am to 7pm or with overtime up to 11pm with half an hour for lunch and half a day on Saturday. They earned between 4 shillings and 14 shillings a week and they worked speedily spreading a leaf of tobacco and making 
gashes in it, then taking fragments of tobacco leaf and rolling it up, cutting it against the guide to a given length and finally taking a narrow strip of leaf, rolling the cigar into a spiral and twisting it at one end. In the 1860s, before the arrival of Polish and other Eastern European Jews who worked in the rag trade, the tobacco industry was the chief employer of Jewish immigrants into the East End. As we walk along the canal, you can see that the area has undergone much generation over the last 20 to 30 years. Many of these flats and houses are of that age or less, which is a slight irony because when the development of this dock took place in the early 19th century, the early 1800s, many people were left homeless as a result of the development. As we look ahead and in a slightly left um, easterly direction, we are looking towards Shadwell Basin, which was another entry point into the dock from the Thames. I don't know about the viewer, but I'm quite uh, quite impressed and almost overwhelmed by the beauty of this place, tree lined and with the canal and with all this wonderful, I'll say it again, brickwork. I wasn't going to use that word again, but really when you look at these views, then you're overwhelmed by it. And we can just about make out the shard in the distance. Tobacco Dock, as mentioned previously, was not just known for its storage of tobacco, but for other goods as well, and a report of the dock from the 30th of June 1849 reports the dock containing nearly 15,000 pipes of port, over 13,000 hogs heads of sherry, 64 pipes of French wine, 796 pipes of cap wine, nearly 8,000 cases of wine, over 10,000 hog heads of brandy and 3,642 pipes of rum. Now we can see this wonderful sight of a cat drinking from the canal. Great sight on this summer's evening, and it's only appropriate. We talked earlier about the problem with rats during the time of the docks. That's probably a, a problem still now, and how they employed 300 cats in order to keep the rat population down with many ships in and around the area. Uh, we know that rats were using this as a 
a mode of transport and this is how the the plague the black death was brought into england and britain originally during the middle of the 14th century So for the next few minutes or so, I'll uh, keep quiet and I'll just allow you to enjoy the background music and the views on offer.
Hermitage Basin opened in 1821 through which smaller vessels such as lighters, a flat bottom barge could enter the docks, avoiding the larger whopping entrance. The basin was closed in 1909, but not filled in and since then has become an attractive feature with water lilies. Before us we can see the famous Roper Circle sculpture by Wendy Taylor, CPE, English artist and sculptor, made from ship's horses, a nautical term for thick rope used in mooring or the towing of ships. So I'll finish the vlog with this one last look over the canal. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog and that's it from the Anglican Flaneurs. Hope to see you again soon.